Today we're talking about our rack and pinning pneumatic actuators. This is an example here, it's SR63 of one of ours. It's got SR63 on the back. It's got uh, a NMU interface with two ports here. There's mechanical stops for your 90 degree rotation, the set for the outer limit. There's an indicator on the top and on the base there's the drive and a ISO interface for mounting onto your ball valve or butterfly valve. Rack and pinion, that's the pinion going through the center. Now, the spring return actuator and the double acting actuator both look identical on the outside. The difference is that a spring return actuator is a double acting actuator with springs. Here's an example of the preloaded springs that go into the end. And we can have up to six springs per end. Obviously, more springs are rather greater the spring closure of the ball valve. The pistons are here, which have got seals on them. This is looking down, plain view. There's a rack driving the pinion, and the springs push in that direction, and the air pushes that way to operate your rack and drive your valve. Um, there's a gallery which runs to the outside to the ends and to the centre. So for your double acting, normally you'd have air going to the outside end or to the centre, so to push out and close back in. In this particular case, we've got the springs to, to close the unit, and when we put the air in, it pushes the pistons out, which then rotates the pinion 90 degrees to open it. So for a single acting, air in, compresses the springs, air out, springs close it. Now the trick is with rack and pinion actuators is to size them because in, if I just go down here, you look at our talk our tables for our pneumatic actuators, you'll see in the model and a spring torque at zero and 90 degrees, a couple of examples, 13 and 20, and the air torque at 5.5 at 90 and 0 and 90, which in this case is 19 and 12. So how that is brought about, the springs, when they're fully, uh, the unit is 0 degrees, it's, the valve is closed, under the action of the spring, we're getting 13 newton metres of compressed spring torque. The spring, when it's slightly loaded up, is going to give you that. When it's fully compressed, it'll give 20 newton metres at 90 degrees. Now, air at 5.5 bar will give us about 32 newton metres of torque, and the springs will give us 13. So the air is trying to, as soon as it, the actuator starts to move off its seat, you've then got the effectiveness of the air trying to push it. So the air force is counterbalanced against the spring tension. So you're getting 19 newton metres of force, which is, can be delivered to your valve to operate your valve. And at 90 degrees, the spring is further closed, and therefore it's got 20 newton metres of force back up in this other area. The air is still 32, so your total is going to be 12 of effective torque. So your important areas are going to be what is left to operate your valve when the springs are fully compressed with your air in this case 12 newton metres, and when there's no air in the system, the amount of torque we've got left here to fully close your valve, which in this case is 30 newton metres. So those are your two critical points. The difference between... Spring at zero and air at 90. Correct. Spring at zero and air at, <laughs> air at 90 is the two torque figures that you're going to be looking to operate your valve.